Welcome to today's SeafoodNews.com video, sponsored by the Alaska Seafood Marketing Institute. One fishery working to reduce bycatch is Alaskan pollock. Pollock is one of the largest and most valuable fisheries in the world. In fact, you might be eating pollock without realizing it, in imitation crab, fish sticks, or a filet -o fish sandwich. The problem is that pollock and juvenile salmon live in the same habitat, so pollock fishing can lead to the accidental capture of salmon, leaving fewer fish for the small subsistence fisheries that have depended on salmon long before the pollock fishery existed. For the Bering Sea pollock fishery, we have Chinook bycatch that impacts subsistence fishermen, people that catch fish for the food they're gonna eat. And so it's really incumbent upon the fishery to consider that nowadays and to think about the impact they have on other people. One possibility for reducing salmon bycatch is to modify the gear used in pollock fishing. But the solution would have to keep pollock in the net while letting salmon out of the net, all without impinging on the captain's ability to fish. The pollock industry decided to take on the challenge itself and gathered a team of scientists and fishermen to create a salmon excluder device for pollock nets. Doing it before the uh, government or anybody else is forcing us to, and I think that's important. So we're trying what we want to try. At the end of the day, we're the professionals. That's all we've ever done. So we have a better shot at figuring it out than anybody. Excluder devices have been successful in other fisheries where the target and non-target animals are different sizes. But because juvenile salmon and pollock are similar, that approach wouldn't work here. So the team came up with another idea, exploit differences in the behaviors of the two fish. We focused on fish behavior in the development of this uh, bycatch reduction device because um, from the start we uh, supposed that salmon were more powerful swimmers and could swim forward in a pollock net um, and pollock wouldn't be able to do that as much. If you think about it, salmon is genetically programmed for later on in his life, it's going to go up a stream. The team decided to place an escape route in the net that they suspected only the salmon could find. They could swim up into the lee, and then we would have a big hole in the net right there, and out they could go. Many doubted an excluder based on behavior differences would work. So the idea is put to the test in the waters off Alaska. Right now what we're doing, we're testing salmon excluders for midwater nets, you know, that we uh, catch pollock with. But testing gear in the ocean is no easy task. It's really hard to see the device working, right? You put it out on a large net, it can be football field long, and you put it into the dark ocean, and how do you know if it's working? To have eyes in the sea, fishermen place cameras with high-powered lights near the excluder device. Now they can watch which fish are going out and which fish are staying in. Now guys can put their excluders in, they can get video of their excluder in action, they can see what they think works and doesn't work for themselves. So the enthusiasm and the ideas have really increased. So we're at the point now where we're developing concepts and the fleet is refining it. And uh, that's where we always hope to be. After tests are completed, the fishing industry brought in the Nature Conservancy to review the data and ensure the results were sound. We were very interested in seeing how this device worked and they wanted to have a third party reviewer look at what they were doing and evaluate it for its science soundness. I think in the past it was uh, less likely that conservationists and fishermen would work together. I think there were a lot of fights um, to be had, but now, moving forward, I really think it's all about collaboration. And we were able to conclude that the salmon excluder device is an effective tool for reducing salmon bycatch. The results are in. After years of fine tuning, the current design of the excluder is working. We've been working on this project for 10 years, going on 11. You know, we're making progress all the time, and that's what keeps this project going. It's a really great kind of last line of defense, if you will. If everything else hasn't worked and that salmon somehow still gets into the net, then it's a great opportunity for it to escape. At this point, we're consistently getting 40% of the Chinook salmon to swim out of the net. The degree of pollock escapement has been ranging from less than 1% to 3%. We're pretty happy with those results. Meanwhile, in Alaska, one last question remained. Would fishermen be willing to use the excluder on their boats? 
Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I don't think we're in this for the immediate reward, but I think it's a long run reward. It's gonna take us to manage and to pursue our fisheries in a healthier way. It's just the way we need to go. We have to be, you know, good stewards of the sea or we're not gonna have much left. I've been on the ocean long enough to know this, you know, and anybody that doesn't think that, just kidding themselves. Now, being stewards of the sea means working together to take proactive steps towards sustainability. And at times, helping fishermen avoid the fish they don't want so they can keep catching the fish they do. When it comes to Alaskan Pollock, we're one step closer. Today's SeafoodNews.com video was brought to you by the Alaska Seafood Marketing Institute. Alaska has been protecting wild and sustainable seafood for generations and adheres to the most recognized and internationally accepted set of guidelines written by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. For recipes and additional information, visit WildAlaskaFlavor.com.